Okay, welcome to our last webinar of the year. We are excited to be here with you and talk about a topic that is so important. And I cannot wait to uh, dig in with our guests from today. Uh, let me share my screen to start. So welcome to uh, Creating Impact Together. This is our third webinar into the Future Proof uh, Your Business series. Uh, hosted by the Long Point Biosphere region and the Simcoe and District Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Long Point Biosphere region is an organization that collaborates to enhance ecosystem and community well-being and unite people with nature, while the Simcoe and District Chamber of Commerce is all about uh, enhancing the economic prosperity in Simcoe and surrounding districts. Uh, so today, let's start with a little bit of a moment to recognize the land that we are hosting this webinar from. We acknowledge that we are located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Neutral, Anishinaabe, and Autonomous people. The Long Point Biosphere region stands in sovereignty on these treaty lands with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Let's just take a moment of gratitude for our First Nations, for the care and teachings that they have about the earth and the relationship that we have to it. Just honor their lands. All right, so in this webinar series, we've been talking about sustainability from different perspectives. Uh, sustainability is about meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I included in this um, in this slide the little uh, sustainability sustainable development goal little blocks. You've probably seen these around and we're going to uh, dive into this a little bit more because these are the 17 global goals that were uh, established by the United Na Nations in 1995. And it's all about sharing a blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet. So as we dive into today's topic of community impact, there is going to be a lot of different links to some of these SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so more specifically, we're going to be talking about relation to business because we are hosting a Norfolk Sustainability Leaders Program right now. So we have the opportunity to be collaborating, supporting, working with uh, all kinds of different businesses locally in making an impact in both our economy, our environment, and our society. And working alongside the SDG allows businesses to be more sustainable. So talking about social sustainability, which is the main uh, goal for this event, is about really trying to see how the impact that businesses can have on our community. Um, the thing that I've noticed by working with the businesses is that tons of businesses are doing so much amazing work already, which is awesome. Like we live in a community where we see people being involved, people being passionate, people being uh, doing a lot of efforts to make your community more sustainable. But I'm also noticing that a lot of the businesses think that they have to do this alone, think that they have to start projects and, you know, go all out and put a lot of pressure on their own resources. And the idea today is that we want to talk about, like, how we can create impact, uh, how we're shifting from, you know, businesses that were just, you know, writing checks in the past as, as their community impact to working together with organizations, other businesses, individual in creating this social impact. Uh, so we we brought in uh, a really great panel today and this session is a little different than the other ones and it's going to be a little bit more conversational, uh, a little more our ability to ask questions and understand from different perspectives uh, about how we can work together to make community impact. So let me introduce uh, our panel. So first we have Adam Berry. Uh, Adam Berry is a professional community project manager. He's a grant writer and advertising consultant. Uh, also sits on the council right now. Congrats, Adam. Um, we also have Shelby Busborg. Uh, she is the project manager in Norfolk for Inwell and has been connected to supportive housing for the last 10 years. 
We also have Graham and Steph from Nova, Nova Mutual. Uh, and it's really, we decided to invite them because we see this business in their community as one that really support uh, great projects and have uh, already made a lot of community impact. And we're excited to kind of get their perspective, ask questions and see if we can get inspired as businesses and organizations to also move forward towards more impact. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen for now because we want to see faces. We want to have a conversation. Um, as the attendant of, of uh, the event, feel free to use the chat box as we navigate through these questions and um, add a uh, touch. If something comes up, please comment. If you have a questions for one of the panelists as we navigate this series, uh, put it in the in the chat box or feel free to use the raise and functions and we can certainly uh, allow you to ask your question that way as well. So uh, I only give a really brief introduction. So I'm actually going to uh, give the panelists a little bit of a chance to introduce themselves a little bit more and also to uh, share with us um, how they've been involved in community impact. So we're, uh, I'm going to go, uh, we'll go to Shelby first, if you want to just introduce yourself and give us a little bit of perspective on, on your connection to community impact. Awesome, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for having me today. Um, so my name is Shelby Vosberg. I am the program manager for Indwell in Norfolk. Um, so for those of you that don't know, Indwell is a Christian charity that creates affordable housing communities that support people seeking health, wellness, and belonging. So in Norfolk, we have two programs. We have our Hamilton Hall location, which is uh, the home to 35 residents, and our new building, Dogwood Suites, which is the home to 57 residents in our downtown core. Indwell has a unique mix of core competencies. We are experienced landlords providing high quality and affordable rental apartments, but we also provide professional supports to all of our tenants tailored on their needs, empowering their health, wellness, and a sense of belonging. We are developers of real estate, new program models, and community housing solution that our, com that our community so desperately is needing. Our approach is rooted in our values that all people have inherent dignity, and deserve to be respected and that we de demonstrate love for our neighbors and that hope is the foundation of all of our actions. So thank you again for having me today. Awesome. Thanks for your introduction, Shelby. Uh, let's go to Adam if you want to give us a quick introduction and a little bit of your take on community impact. Oh, <laughs> so I'm a different, I, I'm a little bit different because I don't really work for anybody, I, um, although I work also for everybody, so it's odd. So I, I am independent in, in my own office. I do projects that are of interest to me. Sometimes I you know, do get paid for them, sometimes I don't. Um, I like the ones that I get paid maybe a little better sometimes, but not always. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know how to, what was the second part of that question? <laughs> Like, you know, what, what's your involvement in community impact? Like, we know okay. you're, you're already, like, I think as a, people that live in Norfolk or do work in Norfolk, we've obviously heard your name before. Yeah. Uh, you're involved in a lot of different, different things, but maybe, like, just, like, what is, what do you bring to community impact or? So, so I guess the very super broad strokes is uh, what, you know, so people say, like, uh, you know, someone should do something. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be the some, someone. I guess, and if I can make things happen, and if I can make um, make a little bit of a living at it, then that's what I'm doing. So that means that when I hear a community group, um, you know, whether they're incorporated or not, if it's just a bunch of citizens or whatever that want to do something, it's like, oh yeah, that's interesting. Can I can I figure that out? And then if I can figure it out, then we do the project. And so that's sort of the the broad strokes is that I have, um, you know, just over time and in the work I've done for different groups and different organizations, just figured out how to do more stuff and then, then bring that to the next thing. So learning how to do grants was a skill I picked up, learning how to be on a board, learning how to do some very, very broad uh, financial administrative work. And then I just bring it to the next group and say, okay, what do we need and how do we build? So I've sort of um, just built a, a, a little bit of a suite of, of abilities that help uh, groups get to the next level that they need to get to. Love it. Thanks for, for thanks for that. We'll dig in a little bit more in this conversation. Let's go to uh, Graham and Steph from Nova. Maybe a quick intro and, and a new connection to uh, community impact. Uh, I'll dive into this one for Team Nova Mutual. 
Um, so Steph and I are two of the creatives from Nova Mutual Insurance based out of Jarvis. We all need insurance. However, the uniqueness of a mutual is that it's policyholders instead of the shareholders own the company. Keeping that in mind, our current and future policyholders are the community. From local hockey to massive murals, Nova aims to spotlight, highlight, and uplift the community around us. We get inspired by positive stories in our backyard and by sharing just a few through modern media. We do this a lot with podcasting, video production, blog posts, and sharing a lot on social media. Um, we're able to make others feel proud and excited about the place they call home. And that's kind of the whole thing that we do in, from a creative standpoint at Nova Mutual. Awesome. Thanks, Graham. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll just go continue with you, Steph, on this, uh, because I, you know, we've seen a lot of the projects to the pandemic. There was a lot of project uh, in connection with Nova's Mutual. We keep seeing your name in the community. So, like, I'd love to know how, how do you pick projects to align yourself with? Like, as, as a business, how do you, yeah, select projects to get involved with? So, um, typically, first, we'll go to our member pool, which is thousands of local businesses, small businesses in the community, um, agriculture, farmers, as well as personal um, insureds as well. So our members are policyholders, insureds, members, just different names for it. So typically we will look within our own members first to see if there's someone doing something amazing that we want to uplift and spotlight and shine a light on them and kind of turn the focus from us onto them. Um, so many of the projects, that's where we start. For any of the stuff outside of our own members, we like to ensure that those projects align with NOVA's core values of courage, integrity, and respect. So a couple of quick examples would be our coverage of the Riders Rainbow Project. I find it hard to think of a better example of someone courageous and doing amazing things in our community than Ryder. Um, working with Spectrum and Owner Tegan shows a great deal of integrity. She's amazing in all that she does. And then a recent project that we did was a back to school food bank support initiative, which all of the food banks that we worked with show an incredible amount of respect for their community and for every citizen within the community. Um, so that's kind of it. It has to feel kind of relevant and right. We search our members and our greater community. I love that. I heard a lot of, you know, connection to, to the values of the business. And also, like, I, I think there was something there about this work with the people that you meet that have this passion there. And I love to hear that. Uh, Shelby, from the organization perspective, when you are trying to connect with uh, supporters in the community, like, what, what are good characteristics of, of, of supporters for your organizations? That's a very good question. Um, so I think when I look at uh, what makes a good community partner, uh, we look at the foundation and that foundation starts with uh, common core values. Um, at Endwell, our common core values are dignity, love and hope, as I previously had mentioned. When we look for a community partner, we look for other organizations who echo these values. Uh, I think another core core characteristic of a good care community partner is defined expectations and leveraging each other's strengths. Uh, this is so imperative in our work with vulnerable individuals and breaking down barriers for them to access services and health supports. I think third uh, characteristic that I believe also makes a really good community partner is trust. Uh, without trust, there can be no commitment, accountability, or a productive conflict. I also think that partnerships are about focusing on what can be built together. In Norfolk, at times, it can be very challenging accessing the resources that many other urban settings have. Therefore, with an understanding that we can be better together, partners can lean in to create and help build a support network through collaboration. We see this all the time at Dogwood Suites. We have struggled to bring Ministry of Health dollars to the region. Uh, we there have, therefore have found other ways to partner um, with other agencies to provide uh, health access for our tenants. So we have the assertive care treatment uh, team that is a commercial tenant of ours at Dogwood Suites. They support people struggling with mental illness and complex needs through intensive treatment and rehabilitation services. We also have a pharmacy moving into another commercial space. If we can't find the Ministry of health dollars to be able to provide medication distribution for our, for our tenants, then uh, we work with a pharmacy who's readily be able to be on site for our tenants and help with their medication management. I think partnership 
is about finding ways in which we can collaboratively fill the gaps to meet those that we serve with the resources that we currently have in front of us. Uh, Adam, do you have a, a different perspective? Like we heard from the corporation and the organization, like for you to define projects that you want to support, obviously if you're being hired, you know, that's a little different, but you also mentioned that sometimes you you just jump in on projects that you're, like what, what calls you to a project, I guess is. Actually, um... Just, I don't mean to quibble with you, but actually, I don't always just do them because I'm being hired. I, I, I've found that chasing, um, I don't know how to say this. So I guess my decision is just projects that feel good or feel like they're going to be valuable or feel like um, they're going to make a difference and maybe uh, rock a boat a little bit, but not tip it over. I, I like those, you know. Um, so when I'm deciding, it, it's it's usually it depends a lot. Some sometimes a lot on who asks. <laughs> so with the Riders Rainbow project, for example, like I just kind of knew that family a little bit, and and uh, and and I had the, the Riders' older brother uh, for baseball. Like I coached the brother there, and so I knew the mom. And and when she asked if I would help uh, do that, I was like, well, yeah, because I know you guys, and I know Riders are good kids. So that was that was that simple. Is that I just, I just knew. Them. And I mean, I also believe in the cause too, but, but and, and I think it's an important thing, but it was really about more making that person to person impact with with people that I actually already kind of knew and cared about a little bit um, with, you know, and so another one that I did recently was with the ball diamond lights in Port Dover. That was the same thing. Like I'm a coach and I and I and I know those kids and I want to make sure that they have, uh, you know, better lights and things are safe. And so that's how I pick is that, you know, do I know a little bit about this group? Do I know a little bit about what they're trying to do? Or and if I don't know anything about them, is it something that I'm interested in that I think will, will make a significant difference? Um, and it doesn't. I guess affecting lots of people is nice, but that's not the decision. It, it's usually. Um, am I going to change? A person it could be one person's life in a significant way if i help them and and that's really the answer so i don't know how many people the crosswalk helps but that's not really important because it means a lot to that one family i don't know how much the ball diamond lights how many people they help but there might be 100 kids that play in them is that enough yeah because to those kids that's that's like everything to be able to to, to actually play safely and see with the senior center like i didn't know in Port Dover, I don't know who, how many we were going to get or, or or whatever, but I knew that the people that wanted it and cared about it, it was going to be really, really important to them. So it's like, well, yeah, of course I'll do this. So uh, and same with Santa Claus, right? Like that's something that like I've been in Santa in Port Dover for many years. I don't know how many, like 12 or 13 or I don't know. It's been a while now. And some people don't even know it's me and, and it doesn't matter. Like who cares? Like I don't I don't do it because I'm chasing that or, or chasing there's no money in it it's just about like is christmas better that particular day for that particular family yeah okay well that's what i'm doing so it really is just about the value that it has for the people that are um affected by the project that's 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 really the beginning and the end of the selection i think there was like a lot of i, I don't know i love this topic it makes me you know makes me feel right like it's so true sometimes we like just think about like the biggest project and the biggest impact and what you're describing right now is like it's not about that right it's it's about making impact that that yeah that feels good to the person that's um yeah it's changing you know a life and that's that's more than good enough right that's that's just, amazing just so, one more quick thing i know everyone's got time but, it's, but the, the, i guess the part of that for me is my hope is that if I do those things, so so this project with Ryder and the crosswalk, it's not just about the project itself, it's about the individual. Is Ryder going to do more things or do great things for someone else because of the support that the community showed to that family? Probably. And so that's a good investment too, right? Is, is rather than feeling like, you know, she doesn't belong, mm -hmm. Oh, there's going to be an impact for many, many years, hopefully, in this community because of this one time where we did something uh, for that individual. And, and, and so say with the seniors, like, are they going to make new connections and make friendships and do other great things because we did something? Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's more where it comes from is like, what is the what is the sustainability and what is the long term uh, output? Like, how does this ripple? And so that's a consideration, too. Mm -hmm. 
so then what does that mean in terms of like you're talking about relationship with people right like being able to see the long-term impact so do you do you nurture those relationships once the the project the grant whatever is is accomplished is there something else that comes out after that sometimes sometimes not it depends on on the the group of the individual i was working with because i'm not trying to insert myself and everything going forward so sometimes it's just you do the thing and then it's over and that's that's totally fine I don't feel bad about it I don't think that's a negative and then sometimes you know it might be a couple of years or sometimes um, it might be right away that you stick with them forever so like another example of that is with rotary you know I've been working at sending um there, there, there's like there's leadership programs through rotary not important but sometimes the people that I've chosen or have worked with to get enrolled and then send them off to these free young leadership program things sometimes they stick with me on other projects or sometimes they do other businesses where I go work with them later and sometimes I don't do anything with them ever again it, I don't think that there's any more or less value um, to the people that I've worked with to get them that far than there is if they do something with me again later like it doesn't matter it's just about the impact there so yeah sometimes we stick around I look at it this is maybe super like self-serving or whatever but I almost look at it as like making movies right like sometimes a director uses the same actors and sometimes they don't and it doesn't mean that the picture that they made with this group is less important because they didn't use those actors again and again whereas sometimes they use them 10 times for every picture they ever make Just, it's who you have to work with so I don't think it matters yeah I think a couple of people mentioned it already. I think Shelby first talked about like defining expectation. And I think Adam, you kind of tied into also like, you know, like the scope of what, what the project is. So, and I, I want to bring this with everybody. Maybe the uh, Nova team can take a, a part on this. Like when you get involved in the project, how do you define those expectations and, and those boundaries? Because it's easy to get overwhelmed, like get too deep in a project as a business and, and feel like there's not enough time to continue to continue to do the regular work so any any thoughts on that of, of scope expectation setting at the start of a project uh steph do you want me to jump in or you want to jump in okay um i feel like when we take on a project or something there's a lot of upfront conversation and the one question that we always ask when we're partnering with people and it, we don't always ask the question because in the case of adam and riders rainbow i mean just listening to adam talk now you want to tell more stories with Adam, right? Like it's, he's just so authentic and real about it. Um, we have a lot of upfront conversations. So we'll actually ask, what do you need? What do you need? So in the case of Spectrum Gymnastics, um, Tegan really wanted to beautify the exterior wall of the building because it's in a unique location in Simcoe, right? So we then took that and we partnered with members and people in our network and community and things and uplifted Tegan's um entrance way with an incredible mural and everything like that um, but we kind of made it clear about we said budget expectations and things like that but it was very much like treating any project and i think when you're a company and you go toward to someone with an incredible gift like this setting those boundaries and expectations are pretty easy with these people because they're just so happy especially because the people we're choosing are real and authentic people too they're so excited that they get to that we're doing this for them or that we're helping mm -hmm. uplift them and also we go beyond that too we continue to tell their story in other ways as well so tegan we had on a podcast episode and we shared more videos about tegan and everything that she does steph i don't know if you have anything else to piggyback on that yeah i think that's exactly how we approach it it's a lot of upfront conversation and boundary setting and just from a business perspective is there a budget is there a timeline we're a very small team it's a gram myself, and then one other is our creative trio, as we call ourselves. So we are limited by the time that we can go out and do all these things. So we kind of set out our next quarter or a broad overview of our year and how many projects can we pick off or how many things can we get involved in? And that's kind of how we're limited in right up front of, okay, maybe there's five things we want to do, but for the next couple months we'll only have time for two or three of them so the the boundaries are kind of set for us and then we just have to communicate that and work with whoever whoever we're working with on the project as well yeah good plan goes a long way not to, to feel overwhelmed or get too deep in a project i'm sure uh shelby do you have a perspective on this like when you start working with a community partner 
on a project? How does that work of defining those boundaries, expectations? So I echo what was said. Um, I think it all comes down to relationship. Um, I know that within our line of work, the work that we do day to day is a combination approach. We can't do it alone. Um, so we work with tons of different community partners daily. And I think just setting out uh, some good guidelines, uh, you know, who's going to be accountable for what. Also, I think it's really important to look at um, duplication of services. So, you know, when we are servicing a tenant or someone in, in vulnerable need, that we're not doing the same type of type of work. So I think it's really important to be able to um, talk to like just keep the conversation flowing um, with the community partners partners to ensure that you know services are being met. I also think it's important and we do this a lot is to highlight other community partners. Um, so for example, like we have a community kitchen, but so does other community partners and we really want to highlight highlight them so that um, you know, we're not, we're not the only people that, that, that people are getting the word out that there's multiple different resources in the community. And like I said, it takes a village with our program in particular. Um, we're constantly having uh, meetings about just how to stay on track and, and how to make sure that we're getting everyone involved. Awesome. That's great. I think it's an important conversation that sometimes when we get into community impact, like it's, like we want to help and we want to do good things and we want to get involved, but it's also important to set those those, those boundaries. So that's a great, really great conversation. Uh, I'm just going to go back to Nova for a moment of like, what is the impact on, on, on the business of being involved in so many of these community projects? Like what are the benefits to, to the company? I'll step in there, Graham. Um, I think it's a win-win for all involved. It, as much as we're uplifting our members or the different community uh, projects that we talk about, a lot of what we do is through these pieces that we put out on social media or a blog post or a podcast, and then whoever we're involved with shares it out. So from a selfish perspective, it gets our name out too as well. And it kind of links people, even if they're not quite sure who we are, oh yeah, Nova, that I remember that with Ryder or I remember that with something else or um, like the Ryder's Rainbow piece, we did a little video and then it gets shared out to get our name. And I think a lot of our approach with that is to kind of organically grow within the communities we exist in anyway. So we're not looking for someone in downtown Toronto to see this video, but it kind of just organically grows within our own community of people seeing it, understanding what the project is, and then saying, oh, that's cool that they got involved in that or that they were part of that. So I think it is a business win. Um, and it's also kind of the concept of like shopping locally. And then it all comes back into the community. It's just kind of keeping everyone, I'm going to help you out. And then you know, you'll shop with them and you'll shop with them. And it's kind of, again, the ripple effect that, that Adam kind of spoke to that terminology, I guess. That's great. Thank you. Um, Adam, from an individual perspective, like I think all of us, if we're landing on this call today, if we want to be part of this conversation, it means that like we want to do good things for our community. Any kind of advice or, or suggestion for people that, that wants, like there's so many things kind of happening and so many causes and so many projects happening. Any, any suggestions on how to get started on something? Yes. Um, okay, I'm glad you added that little bit at the end about starting because there's two, there's two, there's probably more than two, but there's for sure two ways to do this. One is getting involved with something that's already going and that's that's really good. But then there is also the, how do you actually like initiate something and do your own project and, and make that work? So uh, I'm I'm more of a, um, it's not that I just, I don't have any problem with the things that are already going. I, I like doing those too, but I, I have been better at the other ones because I don't need to tinker too much with the, what's already working. So I would say this, I actually do have some advice and I don't know if this is going to go over too good, but it's the truth. Um, I would say partly, um, well, this is easy. So when you start to take 
opportunities and seize opportunities, more opportunities present themselves, right? So that's what it is. So the more you do, the more you, opportunities you get. And that's not my idea. That's the art of war thing. But it's true that the, 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 the more you do, the more you can do. And, and so I would say just start as, as wherever you're comfortable. And if it's small, that's OK, because you'll, you'll build over time and you'll, you'll gain more knowledge and people will trust you more and people will know that you're going to be the person that delivers. So I don't think that there's ever something that's too small or, or it's not worth doing. It's always worth doing. So I would say that's one way to get started. Um, another way to, to get started um, is to accept and i don't mean accept it where you tolerate it but just understand that it might not work and be okay with it um you know don't go in looking to fail or, or saying it's not a big deal but you know don't decide to not do something just because it might not work i i've failed spectacularly um publicly on more than one occasion and it it's awful and it's not a lot of fun but it's like what am i just gonna can do anything because it might not work that doesn't so, I mean, I know there's different comfort levels for people, and I'm not suggesting if you don't do that, there's anything wrong with what you are doing. But I would say that push your your um, your comfort level a little bit, maybe take a risk that uh, feels risky to you, but try it. You might like it, and you might be surprised by what you can achieve if you just, this sounds like, I feel like the rainbow should shoot over my head. But like, it, it's, but if you if you don't ever try, how do you know, right? So I would say that. And then I also would say like, um don't listen to idiots like it, there's going to be people that complain about what you do no matter what right and just because someone's loud or because you perceive them as popular or like being important in the community they can still be wrong um so i would say like if you know someone's wrong or if you believe in what you're doing and, or, and if you you know like with that again with the crosswalk i don't mean to beat the dead horse but like so many people blasted us for that when it was first announced that we were going to work on it and like what are we going to not do something good because of like comments like i who cares so i think but i mean i understand that if you've never faced that before that is daunting like it is awful to have people that don't know you or don't know your project like saying just awful things about you online or sending you messages or do it like it's horrible it is absolutely horrible so you have to decide, like, if you want to make a change, does that matter? And if it does, if it does matter to you, and if you really don't want to deal with it, like, totally fine. Do something in the background, that's fine. But if you actually, like, want to go out and make projects happen that maybe haven't been done before, like, you're going to have to just accept it. And people say, oh, like, have a thick skin. What I'm saying is kind of that, but it's not that. Because thick skin is, like, you listen to it and don't let it bother you. What I'm suggesting is... Don't even listen to it. Like, honestly, like, don't even, like, acknowledge it. Don't let it in. Don't process it and go, well, geez, that may be true, but my thick skin is protecting me. Like, no, like, just don't be friends with those people on Facebook. If they're your friends and they drive you crazy, like, delete them. Like, if, if you don't need them. You don't need to listen to people, like, at all. And, um, like, listen to smart people that will help you, but don't listen to people who are just like, you are you shouldn't do this because of whatever. It's like, so, um. I would say that and and i'll tell you this I, why i know that that last part works is because i was coaching hockey a few years ago and i had a little guy it was just peewee so they're like 11 12. And he was on the bench and he wasn't crying but he had those like frustrated tears like stop being mean to me tears and i said like what's wrong and he's like oh this kid on the other team keeps saying i suck and is calling me names i'm like oh okay i said like you know do you suck he's like no and i said well are you the things he's calling you no I said, man, that kid sounds like a real idiot. He's like, yeah. I'm like, why do you care what idiots think? And he was immediately fine. As soon as it was like, he didn't have to listen to them. He was like, yeah, all right. And I've had this kid every year since then. And he has never let anybody into his head since that moment. And so as soon as I said that to him, I'm like, why don't I follow my own advice? So <laughs> I would just say that, like, just do it. You know, if you know that you're doing the right thing, don't worry about comments and go do good work. I love that. There's sometimes when we break it down for in a kid's perspective, we like have our own light bulb moments. So <laughs> thanks for sharing that, Adam. I, I kind of I, I don't want to get too more on this topic, but from a business perspective, Nova was also involved in the writer's rainbow. And you were just saying, Adam, there was some like kind of some haters on it. From a business perspective, was there some hesitation about participating in in a in a project that, you know attracted to some level some some challenging comments and some different not so welcoming attitude at times any any take on that nova 
So I think when we brought up, this is kind of unique because this is how we, this is another way that we get involved in community projects as well. Um, we take, we really pay attention to what's going on in the community, what's going on in the news. And a lot of the team members actually bring forward a lot of these projects. Steph is the one that brought forward Writer's Rainbow. She was going to community meetings and was very aware of everything that was going on. When we started to kick around everything, every project we do, we always wonder like, how will we be perceived? Obviously, that's the thing, because we're in brand and creative, and we're also representing Nova Mutual Insurance, right? Not just ourselves, but Nova Mutual Insurance. But we kicked it around, and everyone with open art, like, no one had anything awkward or unpleasant or negative to say. And then when we shared it on our social media, no negative comments, no negative feedback from anything. If anything, it was all positive. And I think that's part of kind of the, and this comes to like corporate branding and everything like that, the image that we're trying to create with Nova Mutual, being a community player, but doing it in an authentic way. Not just, you You started the meeting off talking about the giant check photo. And the we're not just doing the giant check photo, we're changing the perspective of the whole thing. If anything, we'll take the camera and turn the camera completely on you and your story. And Nova Mutual is maybe just a graphic in the corner on the whole piece. Um, and it's about not self-serving and all these sort of opportunities and things like that. But yeah, we were so happy and pleased that it was all positive feedback from the, the whole campaign. And I think that's a great thing to know about um, the community as a whole, accepting something like Writer's Rainbow. And hopefully by the video that we created and produced, continue to build momentum for Ryder and the campaign because we know that I don't think the crosswalk has been painted just yet. We were hopeful around the time that when we made the video it would get painted and we're still hopeful that when it does we'll be there to film that footage as well and everything and share that piece of video too. Awesome. Thanks for thanks for addressing that questions because I know from a business perspective it can be a little challenging considering the optics, but it sounds like you followed your heart and your team's, uh, you know, the values of the business and went for it. So good for you. Nice inspiration there. Uh, Shelby, I want to go back to you. And, you know, obviously, you're really connected with the affordable housing uh, in our community. And that's such a like a big issue right now. And I know that some of the business partners may have some um, skills, some expertise to bring, some ways to connect. Like, how how do you see a business being supportive of the, the projects that that you have? How do you start it, I guess, maybe, <laughs> to narrow it down? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, so, like we had talked about before, as an organization, we're really good at building supportive, uh, affordable housing. Uh, we provide health services to those that are housing. Um, you know, we've been asked to try different things. Um, we've been, you know, I, I think this kind of goes back to uh, when we were asked to uh, approach the, the old Norfolk Inn. So our local BIA, Norfolk County staff and community members approached us to, to look at doing something with the, with the old Norfolk Inn. Um, our community partners have been great. Um, I think this kind of ties into your last question a little bit. We are constantly trying to educate people and try to break down some of those stigma uh, and barriers for, for not only our tenants, but for just also folks, you know, folks in the community. Um, we have a really good relationship. We're trying to get involved with more BAA events. Um, we're trying, like I said, really educate the community. Um, we were involved in the, uh, the the event that I believe it was from the speech hens where we did the trick or treating event. And I remember a time, I'm local. So I remember a time that um, we would, I would walk across the street with my children and, and try to stay away from the Norfolk Inn. And it's very much not like that anymore. So um, it's just, it's just an interesting dynamic because we were met with, we're met with a lot of a lot of stigma, unfortunately. And I think it just comes back to um, not only us at educating and, and providing, you know, providing some, some education on breaking down those barriers, but also for our community partners. And, you know, they're the first people to advocate for us. Um, and I think that just goes back to relationship and also, you know, seeing the difference that we've made in the community. Great. I, I love how you, you know, brought the people because I, I, I addressed a question talking about like housing, the housing issue. And then you really like brought in the people that use your services right now and, and, and these humans that are part of your community. And it's just so much more than just the housing piece is, is about the people and the education of the people that, 
you know, we all live in the same community. Um, so thank you. I had actually myself a little moment of like, huh, okay. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like so good. Um, all right. So let's go back to Adam for another question on, like, I know you have worked on like so many different projects, different roles in the project. Like, is there maybe aside from Writer's Rainbow, because we already talked about it, like a project that you just like love the ripple effect that you just like feel so good about? Not necessarily about your involvement, but just about the project on the community level. Um, well, yeah, there's so many, so I'm going to just try to think for a second. Okay, so what I can talk about intelligently, or what passes is intelligent for me, is a Portover Senior Center there. So that was another one where um, it was just a group of, like a small group, like it was like three or four, um, you know, older ladies. Uh, asked me a few years ago if we could have a senior center and I said I don't see why not let's try so it was just a matter of of figuring out how to get that done so you know um, public meetings getting the county to commit a building getting some funding like I'm you know blowing through a lot of stuff very very quickly but it was just about you know um, one piece at a time and and sort of once I had this thing I could get this thing and then that thing led to this thing and it wasn't what I needed but I could maybe use that other thing to get to so it was just um waiting for the tumblers to all fall and they eventually uh more or less did but anyway so where we are today from nothing there's now more than 300 members uh my goal for the first year was 200 uh we are are nine months in and we're at 300 so that's quite good. Um, you know, there's lots. So the uh, harder thing to manage there is that once you have that many people, they all want more stuff. And it's like, okay, like we are like way outpacing the plot line that we thought we had. So yeah, we will get you those things eventually, but like, it's going to be a little bit because we're not ready for this yet. So um, we are ready in terms of we want it, but we're not ready in terms of like, we don't have a million dollars to just do all this stuff. So like, whole lot like can we just, just give me a second to get some money so um there's that part of it um so but it's good but the, the thing that i really like about that isn't just the success uh, in terms of the membership and the programs and whatever else what i like about that is that what i'm in and about there it's like I, I drop in to, i'm not yet a senior so i can't do any of the programs although they always ask me like you want to stay for yoga I'm like no but or do you want to do the fitness I'm like definitely not so um uh but when i pop in there i hear people saying like oh i just moved to dover you know during COVID and i haven't met anybody and this is the first chance i've had to be with people and they're like oh where do you live i live here i live here i'll come over for tea and that doesn't sound like a lot but it but it it is a lot to those individuals like i sort of suggested earlier like that's really what's interesting to me is that individual meaning are we creating meaning for individuals but what is also good is that when you hear those kinds of things it's like oh yeah this project's gonna super work because over tea that they were brought together by the senior center like they're always going to have been brought together by the senior center so that means that this is going to work because people will keep joining and people will keep becoming part of something that is that is excellent like this and so we just had our first uh you know fundraiser event on saturday um you know it was profitable we didn't make a huge amount of money but the idea is that people like they show up and they want to participate and they are really supportive and they've bought into this idea that yeah we all need to come and you know buy a couple couple cocktails and 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 dance a little bit at this thing to make it look good so that we continue to have more events later so that was really good so that's sort of the mm -hmm. project that keeps me thinking and keeps me working is is that one and i'm really i'm, I'm really pr proud of that one and there's other ones i could speak to but that was on my mind this morning so but that's it that's the end yeah yeah connection is so important and in the time when we feel more disconnected than ever like that's a huge impact so great job on that <laughs> that's awesome uh uh staff or graham any like one project that just feel like the ripple effect or, or perhaps even like above what the initial expectations were or something that just makes you really excited to be part of i i have one Steph. you want me to jump in it's one of the first ones that i got to work on when i started with nova mutual so my position here is brand production specialist i take care of virtual production podcasting videos creative things like that my background is tv broadcasting i worked at chch news for so long um, but during COVID, there was the Remembrance Day special or the um, presentation out in Hagersville, and they were still going to do the Hagersville ceremony, but no one could attend. 
Uh, however, Nova Mutual offered to broadcast it live through Facebook. So I took my entire computer setup and a bunch of cameras and everything and multi cameraed it one person, just me doing this whole thing and it got B roll ready and everything like that. We didn't know how impactful this was going to be. Apparently this uh, stream of their Memorial Day special was broadcasted in most of the local schools. People on the East Coast are watching it. People on the West Coast are watching it. People are sending in comments. We're so happy that we're able to see this from Hagersville this year. Um, so-and-so is my family member. It was amazing to hear their name called and, and mentioned. Um, so it was just, that was an incredible thing. And we did that a couple of years following. We kept doing that. And then the other one too, there's two, is um, Shin and Adams. Uh, together we fight for the stem cell transplant when Brad rode the horse through uh, raising money and that was talk about a campaign right that's an incredible situation so we produced a video we donated money and all these sorts of things but we produced a video and the video was just called i think the social media post is uh, it's not every day a cowboy rides through town and i remember shooting the video i caught brad in slow motion coming by nova mutual and then i jumped in the car and i drove up the street and i got the rest of the shots i could get it everything like that but i i didn't know shannon a handful of our team members know Shannon, so that's why we kind of supported this as well. But I got to meet Shannon with the camera and everything. And I remember from hearing the whole story, it was so special to me. And I put a lot of effort into that video piece. And then that video exploded it, from the Hamilton Police Force and so many people watched and saw this video. I think it made a bit of the news and everything like that too. So um, you never really know when you're doing these things as a business, how the spread, especially when it comes to social media or something like that, how many people you're going to touch, how many people will see it. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. I, I, I love the stories and I especially love that you're approaching community impact in a different way in terms of like you are an insurance company, but you're using that media capacity to make impact, which is not the first thought about how an insurance company would help the community. But it's so great to use the resources that you have in your team to um, highlight those, those things and, and uh, you know, have the support of the, the community and bring some awareness and some education. So that, that's really cool. Sometimes I think we think as a business owner in the scope that we are just like the expert in, while there's other resources that we have that might be helpful to community projects. And that's like a, good, a really good way to look at it. So thanks for, for sharing that. Um, Steph, did you have one that you wanted to share? Yeah, I'll jump in too. Um, so this one is not um, in our geographical community, but it's still within our member community. We recently took a trip to Niagara Falls to visit a couple of members there and spotlight and highlight them. And they were both just so incredible. One is called Third Space Cafe and the other is Grow Community Food Literacy Center. Both are just flipping on the head um, food insecurity and um, just helping the vulnerable in their communities, but just doing it in such a different way. The one kind of slogan to come through that day was giving people a hand up, not a hand out, really uplifting them to, to help them make great life choices and better their own lives. It was such a, an amazing day. Um, overall those videos just kind of hit our social recently so I won't go too much into it if you if you're interested to learn more you can check it out there but yeah just learning how we have so many amazing members doing amazing things as well and getting to kind of they're usually the ones helping out and doing all the things so getting to turn it around on them to to showcase them a little bit it's it's a pretty amazing part of the job for sure fantastic <laughs> it feels good to hear the story um, Shelby, like uh, Carol and I are sitting at Groundswell. We're looking at Inwell right now. It's a huge part of downtown Simcoe. You know, the building, the housing, but the people we talked about earlier. Like, are you looking for any support right now? Is there anything that the business community could um, help with to continue to be more inclusive and, um, you know, support our diverse community? Yeah. I think, you know, this, this is, this is a, the situation where um, we continue to try to educate people and, you know, we try to educate people as staff, 
um, we try to educate uh, communities. You know, I, I always say to people that kind of push back with some of with some of the questions. Come in for a tour. You know, we would love to. We would love for you to come in and see our tenants. You know, the thing is, is we indoor staff cannot do this by ourselves, and it, it has never been. You know, um, a, a one man show at Indwell. It has always been um, in combination with community partners and churches and organizations and volunteers. Um, and, you know, we're changing lives every single day. And, you know, when we opened Dogwood Suites, I pulled two people out of the ball diamond and provided them an opportunity to have a warm, stable home. And, um, you know, one thing that that really sticks out to me then, and I love to try to like, going back to education, I love to try to educate people on is, you know, we have a really great relationship with the OPP. And um, they have a satellite office here at Godwood Suites. And um, so not only are we trying to educate our, you know, our our community. We're trying to educate our tenants as well to help with food security and different programming and, and also a good positive relationship with, with the, the police and other agencies. And one of the things that I found very interesting is um, we, have a, we have a couple that lives with us and they've lived with us for the past eight months. And um, the police were just amazed. They said, you know, these individuals were the highest call volume for all of Norfolk in 2021. They had so many calls. It was such, it was such a hard thing for police to have to respond to this because it, it took so much out of the resources for the OPP. And uh, I was, I was very interested. I said, so how many, like, how many calls have you, have you had, you know, in the past eight months? And the answer was one. One. And I just, I find that so incredible. And like I said, that's not just Indwell, that is Indwell with our churches and our volunteers and our community agencies and our community partners and our neighbors. And so, you know, yes, we're, we're really good at some of the things we do. And yes, we provide supports, but it's not just us that do that. And it doesn't just have to be financial contributions. Um, we have a kind of different volunteers that come in to be able to spend time with our folks or, you know, churches educating folks and trying to break down that stigma. And I think that is, is kind of all of our call, right? Because um, homelessness and affordable housing is never, is never gonna go away unless we talk about it. So um, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Right. It makes me just feel like how important of a role we all have to play, right? Individual businesses, organizations mm -hmm. in making our community more sustainable, that we can meet the needs of the people that live here right now and the people that are going to live here in the future. And I hope that you feel a little bit inspired by this conversation. I know I would love to keep going on this. I, I'm just going to open uh you know, the door, if there's any questions, comments from some of the attendees into this webinar, or if there's any thoughts or ideas that, that spark up or any, any questions at all, you can raise your hand or use the chat box. All right. Um, we were going to share a little bit of a worksheet after the event Carol's been working on just to continue this conversation and have more thoughts because I know the attendants are mostly business owner. I know it's busy. You're wearing a lot of hats. It's hard to find some time, time to get involved in things. But I know at the Biosphere, we want to support you in making community impact. Uh, we want to connect you. We want to uh, support you and, and also like not to overwhelm you. We, we need to find things that uh, that are within you know the scope and the boundaries that you've, you've set for yourself. And uh, yeah, we're all already making impact and we can just continue to, to do this moving forward. So I, I really want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for showing up, for being part of this conversation conversation for taking time in this day and this time of year to have this conversation, have this discussion. Uh, I really want to thank uh, our speakers, uh, our panelists, Shelby, Graham, staff, Adam, thank you for your time again. I really appreciate it. I see Justin in the comment is, is thanking everyone. Um, yeah, a good page of notes <laughs> to reference to when it come up, some ideas. That's awesome. Uh, let's keep talking about it. We're here. We want to be part of the change in this community. We want to support uh, impact. So I want to thank you and have a great rest of the day. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.